Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the Moostra Museum and Art Gallery is situated in what is now known as Moostra, Saskatchewan on Treaty 4 territory, which is the traditional lands of the Blackfoot, Cree, Nakota, Dakota, Lakota, Ojibwe and Salto people and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect and honor the treaties that were made on all territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past and we are committed to moving forward in partnership and collaboration with Indigenous nations in the spirit of reconciliation. I'd also like to acknowledge the, our funders for their support. They are the City of Moose Jaw, Sask Arts, Canada Council for the Arts, Sask Culture, Saskatchewan Lotteries, Canadian Heritage, and the Government of Canada. Um, although we're uh, approaching this dialogue as an inter artist interview, we invite you all to feel free to participate in the discussion adding comments or asking questions throughout. Um, you can unmute yourselves or um, add comments and questions in the chat bar. Uh, to start off, I will introduce Hannah. Uh, so Hannah Yokozawa Farquhardson moved from Japan to Salt Coats with her husband and children in 2011. Inspired by the prairie landscape and the quilt makers in her local community, in 2016, she purchased a manual sewing machine and began making quilts and other textile artworks that reflect the rich nuanced local culture, blending imagery from rural Saskatchewan with the Japanese aesthetic qualities of wabi-sabi and mono no awari. You know I'm saying that wrong, <laughs> not quite right. Uh, her neutral palette and the elegant simplicity of her patterns and stitches creates a sense of peace and calm in the viewer while also stimulating a com conversation between Japanese and Canadian cultures forging an intimate connection between the two places. Hannah is an active participant, participant in the Saskatchewan arts community, showing her work extensively and taking part in Carfax mentorship program, where she was mentored by just recently passed year by Dawn Stein. She also produces an Instagram series, Textile Tuesday, which demonstrates her process and creates an accessible space for the public to learn more about art and creating. Her quilts have been displayed in exhibitions and festivals around the world. One of her pieces received the Judge's Choice Award at the 2018 Festival of Quilts in Birmingham, England, and another was shortlisted in the Fine Arts Quilt Masters category. She had her first solo show at the Godfrey Dean Art Gallery in 2020 and will be exhibiting work in a two-person show this fall at the Mann Art Gallery in Prince Albert. She recently was nominated for a Sask Arts Award for the Emerging Artist category. So, um, Hannah, I thought that I wondered if you, we could start off by um, you telling us um, how you got your st uh, start in working in design uh, when you were in Japan and um, how you came to working in, uh, with fabric and fiber arts when you came to Saskatchewan. Um, two, 2000, oh, no, we moved to uh, Saskatchewan in uh, 2011 and, and my hall, house and also relative, relative's house, lots of quilts there and people like it. And I started work at the care home in Salt Coast for, from 2015. Lots of quilts there and when residents are young, they made their, uh, their own quilts or their um, relatives make or donate, quilts are donated. And they, they love the quilt, the feeling. And I, don't, I didn't know about the quilt. So just I was curious about the quilt and I started research um, online and I found a beautiful modern quilt. So I wanted to make the quilt. So. 2016, I started to quilt. Yeah, and you, quilt. Right. And did you, you've made connections with a quilting group in, in your community, is that right? Mm, actually, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, I just uh, um, uh, learn from YouTube or just borrow books from the library. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but the experience to quilt, quilt, quilt is here. So when I don't know something, I can ask or, yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, you also um, worked in design when you were in uh, Japan. Japan. Did you not? Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that? And I just wondered if that, that experience or um, if it, 
uh, sort of created an aesthetic approach that you approach your work with? Mm -hmm. I, I work uh, with the stone company and architecture. Um, and my work is uh, CAD, CAD operator to using computer and make design, whatever uh, architecture or architect wanted to build. So mm -hmm. just co <clears throat> complete <clears throat> with them. And I think, um, yeah, probably I think for the making design something uh, from my experience that's um, ex um, influenced me so much too. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And did, did you uh, did you mention, um, I, th I think you mentioned that you also had designed like gardens, like Zen gardens and that sort of thing as well. Is that right? Oh. Because uh, I work with the stone, so mm -hmm. um, granite or marble or sandstone. Yeah, I always deal with those kind of stones. So okay. always fas fascinated for me. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, so the exhibition wholeness actually features two different bodies of work. Um, one is calling, and that was um, we don't have all the pieces that showed at the Godfrey Dean um, Art Gallery in New Yorkton um, in 2020, but we have um, an, uh, a selection of of those pieces. And we, there's also a new body of work um, that is called Gaia Symphony, and that's work that you've made in response to. Um, Agnes Martin, um, I thought we'd start by talking about calling series, and um, it uh, either, that was the first series that you completed, and it it incorporates a lot of different influences um, in the work. Um, you refer to some memories um, of um, growing up in Japan with your family. Um, you reference concepts of family and um, and community, as well as responding to nature. I just wondered, um, and, and how that's all interconnected. So I wondered if you wanted to talk a little bit about how you, where the ideas came from for that body of work and how it evolved. Um, of course, from that, uh, uh, um, which, which, Hmm? Sorry, which piece was the first piece that you worked on? Maybe seashells. Off? Seashells. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my mother has a cosmetic shops. So every summer she has to uh, decorate the show windows. She likes to, she likes to use the seashells. And someday when I was little, she said, um, uh, just to put a seashell on your ear and you can hear the ocean. And I tried, and actually I heard the uh, sounds of waves, and uh, this still, still, still something for me. That, what? <laughs> that what moment? So I wanted to capture that uh, um, surprise and move, moved on fabric. But I, I really wanted to do not mm, two dimensions, but uh, three dimensions. Right, right. Yeah, there are some of the um, few three-dimensional pieces in the exhibition. Um, and uh, can you talk a little bit about um, what uh, what inspired you to, um, like there's pieces like tree rings and uh, moss, um, where you're really, uh, even hoarfrost, where you're, um, basically in, interpreting um, the textures that you would find in nature um, in mm -hmm. fabric. And um, can you talk a little bit about um, what inspired that work? Okay, so three, two wings first? Yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> I like, I like um, trees because uh, we can see that uh, if we see the bar bark, we can see the texture and the history of the uh, tree itself. But when we cut the tree this way, cross cut way, we can see the tree rings, and the really like we really we can see the um, history. And for me, that that um, tree tree rings is looks like our fingernail. Finger uh, prints, right? Mm -hmm. 
each design and the, ourselves also very unique. And um, how can I say? Just individual, every, everything different, but connect very uh, nicely and in harmony. So I just wanted to capture that uh, um, three rings, gross rings with fabric. Right. Yeah, I think the um, the interconnectedness that um, you um, I think that you were you see in nature it really reflects um, throughout the the exit the series calling. Um, there, uh, like you said, the the tree rings they do relate back to fingerprints, and um, there's just such a beautiful uh, visceral quality to um, to those works. Um, and it's, it's kind of, um, beautiful too, how you're blending, um, your, your Japanese culture with your new experiences of being in, in, in Saskatchewan. Um, and one of those, um, I think pieces, I think reflect, um, uh, sort of honors your new home is, uh, prairie grass. Uh, prairie grasslands mm -hmm. that piece um can you talk a little bit about um uh, that work and how okay. you yes. you chose to uh i because i think the way um i'll let you talk about it but i think the way that you um have incorporated stitching but you've also put uh, incorporated felting with within the quilting um you've really captured the movement that you would see um, in a field in Saskatchewan? Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, as everybody knows that um, we are uh, in Saskatchewan, just sky and grassland, but it looks like it's very simple, but uh, simple, simple means it uh, looks like nothing, but nothing means everything to me. And I, uh, I wanted to capture th this beautiful um, landscape. At the end, one day I watched uh, um, Dr. Suzuki's um, Nature of Things, and they mm -hmm. captured about the grassland in Saskatchewan and how uh, buffalo live on the grass now. So um, when I was 20, early 20 from, um, I really like the Japanese photographer, uh, Hoshino Michio, because um, he really uh, likes the um, indigenous peoples of North America, their lifestyle or mythology or nature. So I really fascinated about what he took the images or, and also he, he, write, he was writing the essays. And that, that, that TV program from uh, Nature of Things and the Michio's, um, the things he captures are really connected. And <clears throat> so for me, the, always when I see the uh, grassland, I, I wanted to hear the thousands of buffaloes thunders from the miles. But we can't, we can't hear that because they were killed. But I wanted to kind of respect the beautiful creatures on my pieces. Right, right. So you can see the white buffalo there too in my pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then if we can see a bit farther, you can see more. Yeah. yeah, I try if we see from this, from this distance or a little bit farther distance how we can see the pieces. So. Right, right. There's, that's, I think, um, a really uh, wonderful thing about um, the work is that there's uh, so much nuance in, t in it and uh, so much subtlety. And every time you look at your pieces, you discover um, more. Um, and 
I wondered if you could talk a, a little bit about the Japanese concept of uh, wabi-sabi and mono no awari oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and how they um, inform your work, like how they connect to your work. Okay. Um, wabi-sabi is um, beauty and imperfection in completed imperfection and incomplete. Something not completed, but not perfect one. But uh, that's beauty. Mm. Yeah. That's uh, no, 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 wabi sabi. Right, right. Yeah, but uh, in Japan, we grow up that so we, we know what the wabi sabi is. So it's uh, hard to explain in English exactly. Right, right. Yeah, um, I think how it was explained to me is um, uh, appreciating the perfection and imperfection. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. Mono no aware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mono no aware uh, means actually um, nothing lasts forever. So it sounds mm -hmm. really sad. Of course, if something, if we are born, we grow up, uh, grew and mature and getting old and die. Always that cycle, every creature have. But um, so, so that means we have to be sad or what we have to do. So I want to take, I take this uh, mono no aware as uh, um, live um, happy, enjoy this moment. Mm -hmm. and do what you really want to do so right so like being pr uh, embracing a uh, being present mm -hmm. um yeah embracing the moment yeah yeah it's lovely idea you have said that um you you see your work as meditations and um i'm wondering um so what are you hoping that the viewers um take away in seeing your work Mm, I think that depends on <laughs> how they want to take. But uh, I try to pour everything from my bottom of my heart, just the pure things I want to take. I, I take, and that is under my heart. So invisible thing, try to visible on my um, pieces on the surface. So I, I if I hope uh, viewers can reflect themselves and find a pure heart or beauty in their own heart and express those beauty into their around surroundings. And hopefully those things uh, from start here and getting bigger and bigger, 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 and then we can make beautiful world I think hmm. so there's um you there's sort of a mysticism I think that you're re referencing in your work um is is it influenced by Zen Buddhism even the concept of uh, being aware of the impermanence of life hmm. um, in yeah. when I was early uh, I was in early 20s I was actually depression so I wanted to find something that um, light, light in my heart. So uh, and so I researched or tried lots of things. And I was 25, I found uh, uh, Buddhism, esoteric Buddhism. So I did lots of meditation training, spirit training. So of course, inside, of course, reflection, reflect ourselves, myself more. So, yeah, I think that uh, practice reflect a lot. Mm. I think, uh, I was gonna say the, um, there's a nice balance in the uh, calling series where um, you, you reference things directly from nature. Like there's, you have images of, you know, a full moon and um, the, the tree rings and um, prairie, the prairie grass lines. And, and then in others, you, they're more um, abstract in form. 
and um, you you reference states of being um, or concepts like there's like the work synchronicity, um, and and so you you start using um, the patterns to reflect more of a concept. Can you uh, did your work evolve that way, or were you working um, both from from um, representational images or from nature, as well as uh, working more abstract? I don't know how to say. <laughs> um, this depends on what kind of inspiration or intuition I can get. So you, uh, so I don't, I don't make. I have to make not pattern one abstract, or I I should make pattern one next, or just uh, go with the flow. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because even well, even the the works that uh, specifically um, respond or um, reference nature, they they read as abstractions as well. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there. Is. So this is the um, some images and installation shots of um, of calling, and um, you you'll see that um, a lot of it is uh, white stitching on white or cream on cream, and so they're very <laughs> subtle, and it's it's hard to capture them um, mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in in images like this. So. Um, if you are able to um, to make it to Moose Jaw um, to see the work, um, or or um, Prince Albert in the fall, um, they're they're definitely um, there. It really makes a difference to see them in person. Oh, the, um, yeah. the reason I want to use uh, neutral color or white or cream color. Is mm -hmm. uh, looks like nothing, <laughs> but I stitch it a lot. But if it's nothing, viewer can uh, move to forward to my piece, mm. and they started to find what I wanna um, say, speak. So that, and then what happened is probably viewers start to think from their experience. And that is the way to connect with the viewers for me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the abstraction that, or the simplicity of the forms allows the viewer to interpret. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So these actually pieces, um, from the calling series, um, they have a the really nice connection to the new body of work, which is Gaia Symphony. So I, we actually just uh, exhibited them sort of between the two um, series. And um, in the Gaia S Symphony series, you're responding to the works of Agnes Martin, um, who, you know, for those of you who are not familiar with Agnes Martin, she's intern or was internationally renowned. She's now um, deceased, but she was uh, born in Saskatchewan, born in Macklin, Saskatchewan, but um, made um, a career, uh, became really well known in New York, um, and then moved uh, to the desert um, in uh, New, New Mexico, I believe. Um, New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, can you talk about um, how you discovered Agnes Martin's work and, and why it resonated with you? Oh, um, last 2020, last um, August, I wanted to um, up, apply one um, art show. And so I wanted to send the application online. And I, wa I was working with my mentor, Don Stein. <laughs> and so, and Don and I were working the um, application and we, I have to choose the favorite artist. And from A to Z, there is an artist, but I, I'm a new artist, so I don't know lots of artists, artists in the world. So Don helping me and we started uh, find from A. And he said, oh, Agnes Martin is here. And I, I didn't know. 
So he said, oh, he explained about Agnes Mati. She was, she was born here, McLean, and her show was Mackenzie 2019 and something, something. And, and she showed, she researched, uh, she Googled Agnes Martin's uh, painting. And I was just surprised because her painting were not like Western style. It was like a Japanese painter's painting or wabi-sabi painter. <laughs> so I started research her and, and then, yeah, I, I know I found he she influenced by Tao Tao Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And he, she used uh, grid lines and I was research the research the Agnes Martin and in my head just a uh, grid line means kind of um, grid line um, life um, Flower of Life uh, design and great Agnes Martin design, something coming up in my head is together, together so I researched it. Hmm. Um, yeah, um, you had quoted um, in your artist statement, Agnes Martin, where she did her first grid painting. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think like she, she sort of um, saw grids as a universal order, I guess, in a way. Um, but she described her painting Trees, which was her first grid painting, um, that when, and this is the quote, when I first made a, a grid, I happened to be thinking of the innocence of trees. And then this grid came into my mind and I thought it represented innocence. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's, uh, I guess um, I, I can, like when I, I look at her work and I, I um, saw that she was influenced by uh, Zen Buddhism and, and Taoism um, and uh, it, I can see how you saw that you were, um, the connections there um, mm -hmm. and between um, how you see your work and how she was approaching it. Um, I, um, I wondered if, um, you could talk a little bit more about the grid format and what um, what it is that interests you. You uh, ma made a comment um, in your artist statement about the um, the geometry, uh, sacred geometry in nature, mm -hmm. and is is that how you see that what the grid represents? Mm -hmm. um, sacred geometry is uh, one cell change. Uh, where we are born, <laughs> one cell and two cells and four and eight, those things um, showing secret, a uh, secret uh, geometry. So I was thinking probably this is round, but uh, my Agnes maybe think straight, to <laughs> straight, straight line too. And also she loved the music. She said uh, the most uh, uh, powerful abstract art is music, she said. So the, her painting should be connected with music too. So I thought she, she wanted to make music on the canvases too. Right, yeah, I, uh, you, when you said that, um when you were looking at her grid works that it suddenly occurred to you that she was like a, like a composer and using the foundations of her canvas as a music uh, composition, um, which, which I think is really interesting. Um, Cause yeah, like even um, she comes out of um, the um, modernist era where a lot of artists uh, were listening to music, did connect their work to music, um, um, a lot of it jazz, um, but I believe she she listened to a lot of classical as mm -hmm. well. Um, 
you reference um, Agnes Martin in your titles. Um, um, like your titles are um, in the Gaia Symphony. A lot of them are mm -hmm. based on states of being uh, like innocence, which, you know, um, she, she often titled her works in terms of states of being as well. Um, and so some of your titles are joy and happiness. Um, and that you also title some of your works in reference to nature. So you have titles like stone, water, wind, air, and forest. Um, can you talk a little bit about, um, like, are you making connections between nature and the states of being in that series? Mm -hmm. well, I, um, I wanted to represent the all creatures, uh, things on the earth or everything we can see in our eyes, also everything we can hear or feel on the earth. So everything connected, make harmony together too. And to this, uh, still I was um, thinking about what uh, Agnes wanted to capture and two, three days ago, I was thinking probably she felt the frequencies, frequency. Is that okay, my English? Frequency? Yeah, yeah. yeah frequency, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, for example, um, dolphin or uh, whales use the frequency because we, but we can't hear. And I think a bird, bird is also using frequency, but we can't hear. And trees also talking each other using what, some kind of frequency. So I was thinking uh, Agnes maybe can feel the frequency in waiting, feel that um, inspiration from each uh, creatures or wind or those frequency waiting for the inspiration from that and then we present on the canvases. So, and also I think I'm influenced by my flower arrangement, arrangement teacher. I went to the, uh, his class when I was little. He was over 80 years old and I, I'm only one student. And her, uh, his um, flower arrangement style is not like uh, um, normal or regular popular um, arrangement style. He just went to the mountain and cut trees and flowers neck from nature. And she just, he just said to me, when we arrange the flower, just to talk, uh, arrange the flower like they are talking each other. Yeah, that's always right. stuck in my head. So, right. so when I'm um, thinking about body of work, um, I want my pieces talk each other, speak each other. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you um, you also mentioned that um, you referenced the ancient Japanese religion of Shinto um, mm -hmm. in, in uh, respect to the Gaia Symphony um, series. Can you talk a little bit about um, like what the um, like sort of the religious philosophy of that of Shinto? Okay, Shinto Shinto is ancient uh, religion religion in Japan. Um, but we, not really old one, but we go to Jinja, just a shrine. And also Bud Buddhist temple too. <laughs> we go both. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but Shinto, from Shinto we learn um, eight, 800, 800 spirits or God, God in the nature. That means each... Uh, Named creatures or wind, or storm, and water, everything has spirit. Mm. Uh, that's really connect for me, they're really similar to um, indigenous peoples. 
um, culture or myth or right? yeah. so very fascinated for me. Yeah, strong yeah. connection for the yeah how how to how to th take it about spirit. Hmm. Yeah, I was I was thinking like when you were um, sort of positioning um, the works that have titles um, of states of being, and then um, that reference nature again. I thought it must be. Um, like referencing um, not only Shinto, like seeing the spirit uh, it, in every uh, living thing or mm -hmm. um, even even stones and wind, like you said, um, having a, a spirit, but also um, like the, again, re referencing the um, Mano no Awari and <laughs> Wabi Sabi as well, um, that, you know, um, just seeing the interconnectedness of, um, of all life and um, embracing um, embracing the moment, you know. Um, I was going to ask you. Um, so in this in this series, Guy Symphony, you're also referencing uh, your Japanese culture um, in your materials. So you're using traditional um, fab or fabrics from traditional kimonos, and especially from within your own family. Um, can you can you talk about why you chose to work with kimonos? Um, I wanted to uh, combine a Western uh, because Agnes is a West Western, and Japan is East. So we we want to combine something, and for me the something we, we present about Japan is kimono. And my my mother really liked kimono, so he, she bought lots of kimono for me. So I have a lot too. And also, uh, it is said in Japanese silk has really fine and thin, mm -hmm. not long but very strong. And so, um, kimono itself has the history. And so Japan, uh, the our kimono has Japan get get uh, get Japanese water and the sun from there. So all things combine into the silk or kimono already, and also craftsmanship in there too. Mm -hmm. So, but so I don't want to put any more into the kimono. So design really. His design is really simple mm -hmm. because if I put too much, maybe I gonna um, distract the craftsmanship right. that uh, who made uh, these kimonos. Right. Yeah. So you wanted to really um, allow the your material um, to be part of the engagement. You know, um, to speak. Um, or to communicate. I, I appreciated when you came to see the show and you pointed out um, the imperfection um, in the um, some of the silk where you said that um, where there's sort of raised um, mm -hmm. the weaving, there's it's just slightly uh, thicker and you said that's where bugs would get caught in the... Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's so again, that... The wabi sabi, you know, the the perfection and imperfection. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's uh, called a little. I don't remember the uh, actual name, but the small, small beetles. Mm. Yeah, they eat uh, silk and wool. Animal uh, fiber they love to, and they nest inside. So, we always careful about how to looking after kimono. Right, right. They love the kind of moisture. In Japan, really moisture in winter, uh, summertime, so we have to hang inside uh, the house and dry, air dry too. Mm. Right. Well, I, um, I thought I would um, open up, um, like ask if there's any questions um, from uh, any of the participants. Um, Maybe we could uh, stop sharing 
Um, I know you're probably all enjoying seeing the images, um, but if uh, and um, Don Stein is here actually. Um, <laughs> hi, Don. <laughs> um, so Don, um, as I mentioned, was uh, has been mentoring Hannah um, in the Carfac mentorship program, but also um, was the curator um, of her first exhibit. Um, uh, of calling um, at the Godfrey Dean. And um, Don, do you have any insights you'd like to share? Oh, good question. <laughs> um, you know, for me, when Hannah first started bringing uh, works for our local artist exhibition, I was uh, immediately struck by many of the things that you're talking about today and the use of the circle. There's so much use of the circle, uh, which reflects a lot of things, but it appears in one of uh, my very favorite of her works called Round Window, <laughs> which uh, just combines with the most elegant, simple little touches, uh, elements from uh, the Japanese culture, the Canadian culture, and, you know, pointing out to me something I'd never noticed before, which is the colors of our flags of Canada and Japan are the same. And mm -hmm. the way that you could invoke these tremendously deep and rich things by having one little strip of kimono fabric and one little strip of salt coat tartan. And this idea that the textiles, uh, it, they just permeate culture. The led us to many, many of these other conversations. So most of my mentoring was around career development because as you've seen, Hannah has a tremendous ability and skill. It didn't need uh, much direction from me in that regard. But uh, the conversation that we've had over the past year for this mentorship program has been really enriching. And I learn so much every time we have this conversation. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. Are there any questions from anyone about um, even um, approaches that? Um, yes, I, 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 can I ask something? Yes. Hi. Hi, Hannah. Hi. I enjoyed uh, your talk thus far very much. I find it very interesting that you have ended up in Saskatchewan based on what you have said. And I'm just wondering how you got here. Oh. How did you end up here? Air and I'll then, once you tell me, then I'll just add to my observations, I guess. Okay. Um, my husband is Canadian and he grew up South Salt Coast near Yorkton. And his uh, parents live in Salt Coast and his uh, brother's family been here. So, and in Japan getting hot for him, he had been in Japan to uh, over 23 years. But for Canadian, it's too hot, so we decided to move to here. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> well, to me, again, based on what you have spoken about, I can't imagine a better place for you to be in terms of the notions of um, absence and presence, you know, emptiness and fullness, light. I mean, this, you landed in the perfect spot on the middle of the prairies, <laughs> really. And obviously, you know, your work and your approach to your work um, sits very beautifully uh, within the sort of geographic aesthetic, I think, of the prairies. And I'm not surprised at all that Agnes Martin would be someone who you would respond to in such a, um, a visceral way. Anyway, thank you. I really, um, I've really enjoyed seeing your work. Um, in terms of Moose Jaw, um, is it, how is COVID there now? In like it's been an issue in terms of coming to the museum because Moose Jaw was sort of 
a little bit of a hotbed. Is it better now? Yes. Yeah, it is better now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because I can see how it would be really important to see these in the flesh. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and the gallery, the gallery is very safe place, of course, as as most uh, galleries are, um, you know, it's, uh, there's not, you can be socially distanced from people seeing the work and it's, um, it's been pretty quiet. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Question. Hello. Hello, Hi. Anna. Hi. <laughs> uh, you seem to be implying that uh, your work reaches the heart of the observer. Is there a healing element where you're looking at the observer being healed by your work? If that happened, that'd be great. <laughs> no. But I mean that, that spiritual element that you seem to be exuding mm -hmm. is it does it have a, a message? Yes, but uh um Every, everybody has a different um, spirituality. So if, if just showing my spirituality on the surface or in, within the, my pieces, so somebody might connect. So not everybody, but the, if one person can be feel, uh, healed, that's my goal. And so always a one and one, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Thank you. <laughs> you have mentioned, Hannah, that you're hoping that um, people, especially um, in terms of the Gaia Symphony, you were saying that you hope that people um, get joy or, mm -hmm. or feel a sense of happiness and peace in looking at your work. And, um, and I can tell you that um, it is a very um, meditative, uh, feelings as uh, space, um, the, the wholeness exhibition, when you walk into it, it's, um, yeah, it feels very introspective and, and peaceful and, and calm. And so it's, um, it's a place where you can definitely slow down um, to take to really take the work in. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, it's Linda. Can you hey, hear Linda. me? Hi, yep. Hannah, I love your, this exhibit. I work at the gallery hey. and the precision and the workmanship, it just, is, it just blew me away. And just knowing, and, and just the feeling that you have when you walk in there, it's, it's just beautiful. It's peaceful and it's inspirational. It's, it's just a beautiful exhibit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, is there, there, are there any other questions or comments? Well, if not, um, oh, I... I, <laughs> Hi, oh, Jen, I, I have one question. Oh, sure. Hi, Let's turn my camera on. Um, I'm, I'm, I just wanted to mention this is going to be touring with OSAC. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the whole part of it is. So that's calling really, will be calling. touring. Calling is touring, so that's really great. Um, I, I've been kind of watching the work that you produce, you've been producing over the last few years. And while the work itself seems very peaceful and calm and relaxed, I think you've produced some, um, oh, here comes my dog, a massive <laughs> amount of work. Um, so I'm a little bit curious about your work process. Um, do, do you have a, do you work a certain amount of time every day um, or do you work to deadlines or through inspiration or how do you, because you seem to explore um, thematics um, and you explore things in slightly different ways and try different things. So um, yeah, talk a little bit about your work process. I'm curious about that. Okay. Um... Um, usually I'm waiting for the inspiration or intuition coming to me, but uh, 
Um, probably I worked at the architecture or a stone company at, uh, in Japan. So I like to set the deadline all the, always. Um, if I set the deadline, some, something, my power coming from here <laughs> because I have to finish. But um, so I set the schedule, but I have uh, uh, now uh, all this one coming back. So we have four kids. So it's uh, really busy, but um, yeah, when I have time, I just uh, do what I, I want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very, very impressive, I think, just seeing, I haven't seen the show in person, but I will um, <laughs> see that much work up, you know, over the last few years in one space. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, I should probably get Hannah to not listen to what I'm going to say because <laughs> she's modest, but just to follow on with that. It's uh, astonishing how much work Hannah was able to create to meet the deadline of the first exhibition. And then even while we were doing the mentorship, I had no idea she had created another or beginning of a body of work. And it was like halfway completed before she even shared that with me. So uh, she's being modest, but it it is, uh, it really amazing, the ability to focus like that, feel the inspiration. But uh, as, I, as you were alluding to before, the technical quality, the stitch work, the uh, finished um, nature of everything is uh, also very, another element of enjoyment and richness. For, you'll want to pick it up and look behind, so make sure you don't. <laughs> um, we, uh, completely conceived um, on all sides, front and back. Sometimes the pieces from, we've talked about this too, the back of the pieces is often just as interesting. And so you want to see uh, sometimes a way to exhibit so that you can see that and get a glimpse of the, um, the stitch work that's behind the stitch work. It's really, really uh, inspiring that way. Especially for somebody lazy like me. So. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Um, so uh, Noreen is asking, I'm interested in this. What is Hannah's background in stitch work? Um, uh, I just watched what uh, my mama made all the time. Because my mom can do, uh, can make good make uh, Japanese kimono, Western style kimono and knitting and crochet, she, she can do whatever I wanted to know, I wanted to learn. Always, uh, she, I don't know she, why, don't, why she knew everything, but uh, yeah. So I was watching what she's doing, she was doing all the time. And from uh, in Japan from grade six, we, bought, we have to buy sewing set and we learn how to stitch or how to use the sewing machine. And from grade eight or nine, uh, girls ha had, had to make uh, pajamas. So I use that technique for my textile now. <laughs> and uh, Kathy's asking how long would the exhibition will be at our location? So the exhibition is on display until August the 15th. So there's, there's still lots of time to see it. And then hopefully, um, yeah, it, it will be touring um, after it leaves our, lo our location, it'll be on an OSAC tour uh, throughout the province. So um, hopefully it will come, um, you know, to a community near, um, to a community near you. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? Thanks everyone for um, contributing. Oh, 
Here's one from Jody. Uh, do you engage in meditative practices? Mm, yes, I, I did. Uh, I had been doing since 25, so 25 years. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing. Belinda says, thanks for the great talk. Thanks. So yes, thank you, Hannah, um, thank you so for, um, for in, uh, talking about your work tonight. And um, it's really wonderful to hear you talk more in depth about it. Thank you to everyone who um, came out tonight to um, participate in uh, with all the great questions and comments. And um, yeah, as I said, I hope you can see the, the work in person, but uh, we do have a virtual exhibition of it um, on our website. If, if you aren't able to get to Moose Jaw, it's not the same um, at all because it, it won't allow you to see the detail that um, you have to see. Um, it's great to see in the flesh, so. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks, Marie. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Bye from Saskatoon. Bye, everyone.